government which does not waste the people's money. That is essentially necessary for having a lean government. Has this been achieved in the last 18 years? Get to know Guyana's People Partnership. Plan for a better today. Together we will. Welcome again to our live show. I'm Peter Ramsroop, our host. Uh, we have an exciting program today uh, that uh, we will be speaking about many current issues dealing with our young people. And I have a, a very distinguished panel that will be with me uh, on the program. Before I get started, uh, on my show on Wednesday at 12.30, I made a statement uh, concerning uh, the head of GRA uh, that the that that person doesn't pay equal taxes as uh, an ordinary citizen. I stand corrected on that statement. I was uh, informed that that's no longer the, the situation, and I have retracted that statement. And as we get into our show today, thank you for joining us uh, in Guyana here. Uh, mothers, uh, children, young people, men watching the show locally in Guyana and worldwide on the internet, cns6.tv. Welcome you uh, to our live program. I'd like to introduce my guest today, and, and the topic of our conversation is driving change, the new generation. You know, 60% of our population in Guyana uh, in 2011 will be between the ages of 18 and 35, as estimated by some of the statistical numbers available uh, to us. And that is a, is a, a profound fact that 60% of the population that is under 35 will make that decision on how they want to take a country forward, what are their issues, and how much they're going to get involved. So with me on my panel today is on my uh, far left is Sherrod Duncan. He's a second year communication major and um, former past of the University Student Council, a dynamic young individual, very impressive. I must say, uh, to my left here uh, is Jane Stort. She is a graduate of the Sir Potter Teachers College. Uh, she's also a full-time UG student in public management. And on my right is Ganesh Maripal, uh, the current UG uh, Secretary of the Student Council. Uh, very guy on campus, uh, very much involved in in trying to make a difference for young people. And I, I'm excited today because as you listen to these individuals, you know, these, these individuals are the future of a country. Now, I'm feeling old. You know, people say, Peter Ramstrup, you're young. But when I sit next to these three <laughs> distinguished individuals, I feel that, they, you know, I, I'm no longer at 18 to 35. I'm way past that. So welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I, I look forward to our conversation. As I, as I mentioned, the new generation is stepping up to the plate. They're stepping up to say that these are the issues that we are faced with. What are they going to do about it? What are they looking for in a better education system, in better economic system? You know, I've spoken to a lot of, of, of these folks here and many other UG students, and one of the things that is always a concern to a potential graduate or potential even from high school what are the job opportunities available in Guyana? Is our economic situation solid enough that they can look forward to hope in the future that they will be able to find a decent job that equals their level of education? You know, sometimes when you spend so much money going to school for four years, it could cut up to close to $2 million, and you come out and can't find a job, or you come out making a $40,000 salary, that is a very difficult uh, situation for young people to pay back their loans. We discussed this. Uh, Ganesh, you as the former, as the current secretary of, of UG, there are many, many issues that you have been at the forefront. You've been in the papers. You've been on the news. I've seen you protesting. I've seen you um, in forums with UG students. What, what are the critical issues you are seeing today that, that, that really concerns you and other students? Well, well there, there are many issues, <coughs> a number of issues, and these are leaves or the stem of, of, the, of the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is that we're underfunded. Because we're underfunded, a number of issues stem from there. There are other issues that where we have lecturers who, who believe that they, they are God in the campus and those sort of things that we're trying to mitigate, but it's difficult. I was reading the newspaper this, uh, this morning in, in Starbrook News, where Evan Passard actually 
said yes, he, he teaches with profanity in classroom, and he does it as he wants to prepare us for society outside. I find that strange, because if you're going to prepare us for society outside, you're supposed to make us better. You're not supposed to perpetuate what is out there, make it better. And the fact that we're underfunded, coming back to the whole issue that we have at UG, the, the, the quality of lectures, the quality of the classroom, the quality of the, of the, of the library, that all these issues stem from the fact that we don't have money to execute proper uh, environment for studying. But this is our premier university, our only university in Ghana. I mean, why have you s not seen that level of interest? I mean, I was very surprised last weekend, I think, at the graduation, um, where not a lot of officials showed up at the graduation ceremony of what? How many students graduated? One thousand. Uh, Twelve hundred. That was a that was a profound uh, absence from officials. It's a great shame. It's yeah. a great shame to know that we are producing the future of our country. They are saying on television and to the public that education is the front is the thing that we need to develop our country, and then we're making it look as though it's a privilege. But my thing is, education is not a privilege. Education is a right, and every individual should be given that right to be given a proper education. And for them to get that education, or to get that proper education that they have to get, there is where we expect our leaders, our mentors, our so-called mentors, to come in and and play a pivotal role in our education system. Maybe they're playing a, a role in, in, in the primary or the secondary level, uh, which, which is compulsory, but we expect them to play a, a pivotal role in the tertiary level, the level where it dictates where you move next to, the, or next step, where we go from there. That is the level that we expect them to play a part in. Our university, I think, that I don't, I've never... Went to, I went to Suriname University before and, and, and uh, in, in Jamaica, but I've never went to no other universities around the world. But comparing it to, to our university to the other two, I'm ashamed to tell people that I'm from Guyana University. Rod, you've, you've been the past president of University Student Council, a very active president, I must say. Uh, why such a hassle? Why, why are you finding it so difficult to have... Uh, not just the local administration, but just the public as a whole, private sector, government, to pay attention to this level of education. I would want to say that the, um, thanks first and foremost for having me on, on, on the program. Um, I think last year was a tremendous year economically. Um, we had a recession happening, and so I don't fault the private sector too much last year, but in previous years and coming out of last year, um, we don't seem to be on the same page where education is concerned. We don't seem to all be on the same page where advancing the business of the university is concerned. For instance, um, the strategic plan for the 2009 to 2012, we had um, the, the, the vice chancellor hosted a meeting with the private sector in April of this year. Um, there were a number of persons who were there representing the, big, the, 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 the business sector. Um, I don't believe, looking at the, at the audience that afternoon, it was the real movers and shakers of the private sector. Nonetheless, they were there. Um, to date, I don't think we have had 10% of the persons uh, who were there that afternoon make any meaningful contribution to the unit. Um, there was still room for, for growth, there was still room for them to do s something, but I, I don't think within that time to now, um, we have had any real movement in terms of ad advancing the, 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 the quality of education that we get at Turkine. But, but Ganesh mentioned just the deplorable, I think we have a slide or two on the deplorable condition of just the environment that you're dealing with. So even though as we're talking about private sector involvement, public sector uh, investment, the, 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 the accommodations that you're dealing with, and the picture on the, the screen there that shows one of your buildings, I mean, how do you expect to have a good school environment in areas like that? I think the bathrooms, Ganesh, I mean, you, you, you're campaigning against this issue. W w where we're at on all of this? Well, well, to my knowledge, and this is knowledge that I've gained from, from our administration at the University of Guyana, is that we have two budgets. We have a recurrent expenditure budget and we have a, 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 a capital budget. And the capital comes from the Ministry of Education and that has to go through central, uh, central government or cabinet and then they can look after. So they, they're responsible for, for the actual the elevation of the, at the buildings, making it 